Welcome to another photo critique from the Digital Photo Rec Flickr group, 500 pics. I put the call out on Facebook, if you don't know, um, usually about 24 hours before we do a critique, and then folks post links to their images they would like critiqued. Uh, this week we have picked a subset of the group submitted um, that we thought were interesting for one reason or another, and I wanted to do something a little bit different tonight and then have a couple that we're just going to touch briefly on. I always feel bad. We have to, you know, narrow the group down. We don't have time to critique all of them. And um, although I'd like to, but I also wouldn't like to sit here for three hours each week. And I don't think many of you would watch for three hours each week, but you would love to see your image critiqued. Anyway, a couple of them we are just going to touch on 15, 20 seconds. Here's the first thing we want you to work on in this picture, or this is what we love about this picture, and we'll move on. So some will be short, some will be long. We'll see how that flows. I'm doing all the talking. My name's Toby. And I'm Christina. And uh, let's just jump right into this first picture from Morteza. City Lights Under the Thunder. This is Pittsburgh. I know because I already read the metadata. I think it's kind of cool because we had a Pittsburgh photo a couple of weeks ago, that stadium one. Yes. Um, but this is not the same guy. This is a different guy. Another mm -hmm. photographer in Pittsburgh who wants his image critiqued. I I like this picture a lot. I I think the exposure is great, especially considering the lightning bolt that was captured um, on the top left. The composition is really good. I like that there is a lot of background. Um, as for those of you who watch regularly, you know that I much prefer background over lots of foreground. Um, so. It kind of ticks lots of my boxes for things that I'm looking for. Um, nothing looks super, you know, no no shadows are uh, super clipped and no highlights are super clipped. Um, so there's a really nice dynamic range that's maintained throughout the photo. Um, and I just really like the perspective. I like the, you know, to see the city. It looks just so huge and... Um, yeah, that's all, that's all I have to say. I, I, I think, um, I agree with all that as I often agree with your opinions often, but not always. I think these, the foreground elements of the shadows of the trees adds a nice framing to it, almost a natural yes. vignette. Yeah. Um, I think that's good. I think we've got a lovely reflection in the water and I like that we're not straight on. I think if I had come here to set up, my first thought would be to kind of get this perfect straight on perpendicular to the city shot. But this angle, which you probably may have been forced to take, uh, because often it's hard to find a straight on shot, works very well. I like this going off at an angle here. Lightning right. bolt capture in a quarter of a second was awesome. Uh, I'm assuming that this wasn't a composite and, and that was just a nice lucky strike there. We should say that the the reason you have to watch it. You can't just you know, or I'm I'm saying you can't. You really can do whatever you want, but um. <laughs> but it won't look good, uh, right? Or we won't think it looks right. Good. We won't think it looks good. Your mom might. <laughs> um. So, won't when he says that you shot it from an angle, from a different perspective, as opposed to straight on, even if you didn't have the chance. We're not saying like go out and shoot everything at an angle. Um. I mean this. This picture in particular works because there's all of this stuff framing all of this. If this was just empty space, it may not have worked as well. So um, be very, very uh, aware of everything that's in your frame, um, including this. You know, anything that you could use to frame to fill any negative space that could, you know, become dead space um, if, if not filled in. Okay, great. Nice shot, and I'll just add that, you, you know, I think this would be a perfectly acceptable place to create a composite, whereas if you had done a long exposure that had gotten the lightning bolt in, the, in one shot, um, and then another where this city was perfectly exposed, I think it would be fine to layer them in Photoshop and bring that lightning bolt in. Yeah. Um, so I just want to share that as a suggestion uh, for possibility. Thank you, Mortiza. Devin has the Winnie Palmer Hospital in Orlando, Florida. Uh, you know, I think it's interesting that hospitals are starting, I know this is true with Johns Hopkins in Maryland too, these very um, kind of futuristic stylists, very, you know, interesting looking, not this kind of boring drab building where 
people go to get healed yeah. or die. Um, and this is this is cool. And I really, I think the framing is really nice here. You've you've left a little bit of breathing room up at the top. Got a little bit of clipping of this awning here, but that's really not a an, you know an important no. piece to this whole story. Uh, and same with over here, this clipping off here is, is fine. You're really capturing these kind of black and steel and and having this globe here um, as your centerpiece. And I think it all works quite nicely. Yeah. I, I don't like this kind of architecture personally, but I really, I really do love the perspective. Um, this photo is really cool. Uh, I, I think that you could go so many ways in trying to capture this building. And I, that this was just a really great way. I, th I thought, I think the focal length worked really well. The perspective um, shooting from a low angle up worked really well as well. It almost seems like all the lines are converging up, all the lines in the building, um, including the one on the orb right here the, or the globe. Um, so it's just, I, I don't know, it's just a very visually pleasing photograph, um, even if I don't love the architecture. Yeah. My only beef, um, it looks just this tiny bit of cutoff here at the bottom. We have those wheels that are cut off down there. Um, and that's very minor, not a big deal. I also feel like, uh, you know, shot at 24, we're getting a little bit of distortion, and so we're getting this kind of lean back here in this yeah. area. But I think it works with this pic with this picture yeah, and this I, building. Yep. I'd be interested to see what this looked like if it was, well, the horizon is straight. I think it would be boring. Yep. If it were, okay. this was shot with a zoom lens. and. Yep. All right, great colors, great sky. Yeah, um, great really sky. Done. Nice exposure. Thank you, Devin. This is really cool. I'd love to know, is there a um, caption? No. I'd love to know more about this picture and what this man was doing. I would guess that he's probably fishing or about to fish. Yes. So that's that's what I love most about this moment is uh, this this photo is that it is a moment. This is he is doing something. It's interesting. Um, it, it, he's standing one legged. I'm just telling people what the picture looks like, and everybody's looking. At it at the same time. <laughs> but you know, clearly, it's um, it's a f mo second in time. You yes. know, a millisecond in time that was captured and a unique one, um, at least. From our perspective, not being around this area where people fish like this. Right. And, and you know, I think there's something to be said about the composition and the timing and all of these different elements that come together to create pictures like this because I don't, you know, I can't say for sure that this was the case, but I don't think he did this for very long. So you really have to be prepared and you have to have the right lens and frame it right and you know, create a balanced photograph in a fraction of a second. So, um, you know, this is just really well done. Everything's filling the frame. Nothing feels too crowded. Um, it's just perfectly composed, in my opinion. And the light's really beautiful also. The light is, I think it was a golden hour, it seems, like it was taken at. Yes, it does. I'm a little curious because I guess the shadow's coming off onto the right. I have to be honest, though, I don't love the picture. Um, oh, really? I, yeah, I think it doesn't, you know, when we were going through and finding different ones, um, and we and this one went, came by, um, I was happy to have it be part of the critique. But, and it, you know, as I said, it's a unique story and a unique moment, but there's something about it that, that doesn't grab me. Hmm. Uh, and I'm not sure if it's because it's this little bit of blockage of his face here, and so I lose that connection with this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or what? I but don't know. I do compositionally, perfect framing. Yeah. Um, really nice moment captured. Just doesn't grab me. Yeah, that okay. makes sense. Thank you, Sylvain. Kenneth has nature admits, admits urbanization, and I almost feel like this is similar to, I realize this now as we're spending a little more time, similar to our very first shot of kind of yeah. Pittsburgh. It's just a little bit more room given here. Um, there's a lot of layers in this photograph, mm -hmm. um, which is what I think I love most about it. Um, I I just I really love the focal length, the very wide focal length, and how it makes the trees look so small. They look almost like a, like broccoli. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
and I love the shadows coming. I love the, the shadows that, as well. The lighting here is really nicely done. Yeah. What is, what's our exposure here? What's the time? 0.8. Yeah. 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 It's just it's just a really nice nice capture and you know that I I don't know how much some of you watch our and I like to think that you know that our feedback really does help you um you know compose photos and and take photos um but yeah I mean like this the, the compositionally this is really awesome it's it's so balanced and you know there's really almost nothing that feels super distracting um i don't know that there's anything that i would change about this this photo. is i'm just reading this this is kenneth's view from his room at night oh wow that's <laughs> a really cool view it's a pretty cool view kenneth my I, I i agree with everything christina said i don't think i have really anything to add except for this over here um it does take my eye away from the rest of the stuff but i also feel like it brings it back um and then also it does fill in like a lot of this stuff that would be dead space if there was nothing on it. Hmm. So I feel like it adds That's a good point. It adds balance to this side of the image. So I like it. Yeah. The other thing I would be interested to see is, and this would be an issue here with this light, you would have to um, maybe do a little bit of sandwiching, but a slightly longer exposure that would smooth this, yeah. this water out a little bit, get rid of these ripples and really give it that silk glass look, I think could be interesting. But again, you would have to... Um, have another shorter exoposure and balance. That well, you could stop your aperture down a little bit. You know, you're shooting, oh, right. at, you're F2 shooting at F2.8. Eight. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Good call. Nice. Thank you, Kenneth. This is one I'm going to be our, one of our first brief ones. Uh, I just think that this works really well as a black and white. The detail here in the fur is just spot on. The focus is great. At the just enough depth of field that we're getting from nose to just back of the head. Even the little ears are starting to be out of focus. So adorable. And it's adorable kitty cat. Maybe a little bit more would have been nice, a little bit more room away from this tree, um, but that's right in our faces. But as I said, this is a brief one and we're moving on. Thank you, Sam. So the first thing that really strikes me about this photo is the intense color. And again, there's so many layers. That's what strikes me. Well, yes, first it's the intense color. Second, it is this industrial feeling of these smokestacks. Yeah. And like some scene you would see in some movie where, you know, it's showing all of these factories working overtime to produce something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and then third is the layers. Yeah, it's just, it's a really, really cool picture. And now people who watch our podcast might be feeling like there's some irony here that we chose a sunset picture to critique. Yeah, but... Do we want to... But this is, I don't know. I just, I feel like I don't see many... Well, I'm not surrounded by a place like this. Um, and it's, it was also like the sun itself is just so huge. Um, it's not just any sunset, you know. It's... It's very different. It's a very different photo. Um, and I don't feel like the whole point of this photograph was the sunset, which is the case for many sunset photographs. She's like, oh, sunset, that must be a beautiful photo. Right. This was all of this highlighted and um, backlit and silhouetted by the bright sun behind it. And it just adds a ton of interest. Like you don't see a lot of color a lot of different colors, but you still see so much detail um, and so many layers that it's still just such an interesting picture. Yeah. I would like to know where this is. This Berlin. Is, uh, Berlin. <laughs> the title tells us. Yep, yeah. I see that now. Um, you can even get a little bit deeper. I do have a criticism in a minute, but you can get a little bit deeper and talk about old and new because we have these smokestacks, this industrial, but then back here we can get this glimpse of all of these wind towers uh, generating clean energy. And I think down here, I'm going to guess those are solar panels. I'm a little bit of a environmentalist. Uh, so those catch my eyes. And so I think there's some really neat elements that are hidden within this, uh, yeah. this image. Yeah, like I could look at this for a very long time and find new things, yep. which is, I think, you know, those are the photographs of, that speak to me the most, the ones that pull me in and like I'll be looking at it and then all of a sudden I'll see something I didn't see before and I could just keep doing that over and over yep. again. Now I will say that it gets very busy down in here. Um, in kind but of it a works. jumbled way. You feel that it works? Yeah, I feel like it works. 
I'm sticking to my guns. I say it's busy um, and that it, it subtracts a somewhat from these nice uh, kind of misty layers that work in the background. All right, great. Thanks so much, Frank. So this is a really, um, it's a very eye-catching, um, just, I, what's the right word? Intriguing portrait intriguing um, just the connection with the eyes and the em emotion and it, it really works mm -hmm. well for me yeah. um, and I like that the bokeh and the brightness and all of these circles are kind of framing this person's face so you know your eye doesn't really wander too much around outside um, and I see that there's smoke, and I think when we first looked at this picture, we weren't totally sure what it was. We thought it was mocha at first, but then we realized it was smoke. And I, I would say that that's probably the only really distracting thing that I that I notice about this picture, that the smoke kind of throws me off a little bit. Like, where is it enough. coming right, from? Right, right. If, if, if there was a little bit coming out of his mouth, we could say, okay, he was just exhaling from smoking um, and, you know, would give us a little bit more information, but it's just just enough to not quite know. And I also want to see ooh, the Fuji XE1 at F1. Wow. That's, yeah, a that's a really killer yeah. portrait. And there's a lot of grain or noise in it, but it works really well oh, in yeah. this picture. Um, and then the detail and the exposure here in his face um, and in the shadow, it could be, you have to be careful because when folks wear hats, that shadow can often cast way down and make this area much darker, but this works really well. Yeah, great, nice. great, great portrait. Shot. Another quick, quick one, and this is where I say, um, you know, are we, gosh, that share image button again. Just the seagull. The um, just busy bits down below um, just subtract from this image. Um, and that seagull is cool. You've caught him uh, nicely, uh, but just f zoom in on him next time. Yeah, just don't be afraid, don't be afraid to crop. You yes. to remove distracting elements. Yep. Very nice. Okay. Another very quick one. A couple in a row. We've got some nice bokeh here, but our, our colors and our framing and the way that these two leaves are lit, and I think this is a cherry of some sort, and I could see a hint of one over here now that I'm looking, but um, our colors are just off enough and our perspective is just off enough that this picture isn't giving me anything. Um, I, except a slight confusion, Yeah, I'm going to say. So I would like to see this from a slightly different angle um, and just just a little bit sharper, not as sharp in there. I think this is the subject, um, and it's just kind of sitting there in the middle, suspended in this stranger way. Another quick one. Thank you. Oh, I didn't even mean to have that. This is cool because a lot of times we get macro shots. That's another quick one. Um, that are very nice. JCB has submitted consistently beautiful macro shots. They don't always have a story though. Sometimes those guys, those little jumping spiders have almost expressions to them. But in this one from, why don't we have, oh, there we go, Breakfast from Sean, we have a little bit more of a story. Yeah. And I like that. And so I just wanted to point that out. It's really nice. Great detail. Again, we're seeing that super shallow depth of field. I just love F8. the- yeah, the colors are really great. The hint in the wings, very nice. Well, I wasn't even talking about that. I mean, just like the monochromatic. Well, it's just that there's very neutral tones all over. So the the spider is almost, I'm sure if you were far enough away, it would be basically camouflaged in the wood. Mm. Um, and same with the fly. It's pretty, the colors are pretty neutral on it, except for the wings. Um so I, from a, the perspective of color and minimalism in, in that, I really like it. Yeah, well, that, I was going to say, I like that there's just this hint of color here and then everything else is very mon monochromatic. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. This one I just wanted to say we looked at and my first thought was, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then you look at it, it's just like, it's so busy. And that can kind of work for it, but I think you would be better off to really focus in on a section, um, a couple of drops in some kind of pattern along one of these branches could be interesting. But you know, that's one of the things that you all do that I love is you comment, you watch this, 
you give us your opinions on these images. Uh, so certainly this would be one. Does this work for you? Um, in its busyness with this kind of, I, I almost think of like a, a incredibly macro view of the universe and solar systems and all these little worlds and stuff. And a little it's wacky, a little creepy to me. Is it a little creepy? Yeah. To you? Huh. It's just like, it almost looks like tentacles. Oh, it looks very, it is very, I think it looks it's, hair like hair. Yeah, I think huh. it's because it's in black and white. Is this a natural thing? Is this a, a flowery thing? I, it, Using the 100. L, I love love that lens. I would think nice. so. Scott, I'd love to hear a little bit more about what this is and maybe see a color version as well. I do think the black and white works, but again, I'd like to see it focused in. Um, yeah, there's no clear subject. Yeah. Great. I love this one. I love the texture in this one. I just think it's it feels like a pillow. <laughs> uh -huh. it looks like a, I, I don't know, like a feather pillow, if that makes sense. And so... Yeah, I mean, that that's sort of one of the other things that I love so much about photography is like you, when you have a picture like this that you almost have this very tactile feel to it um, because there is so much texture and because you can kind of still see a little bit of detail that gives you an idea of what you're looking at and what the rest of it. Like you only need this much information to figure out what the rest of everything else is. Um, so everything just acts as like texture and I can almost feel this. So that that's very cool to me. Very nice. I don't have anything to add. I love it. Um, you know, I, the backyard weeds is a great title and just realizing it's a little cheesy to say, but the beauty in stuff all around us, yeah, especially no, when absolutely. using a macro lens. Oh, look, the 40 millimeter micro. Love that lens as well. It's such an affordable lens. I'm going to guess that this is cropped in some. Eric, let us know if it's not, because I know the 40 is good, but I don't know if it's this good um, without a little cropping help. But that's one of the really fun things about macro lenses is your backyard can suddenly become this incredibly um, pot potential. So great photo, perfect framing. Love it. Luke's got some bubbles for us. So this is a pretty cool perspective. Um... I like the framing and the composition. It looks like you did some cropping, um, which I'm going to venture to guess that it was because you tried to remove some distracting elements. This line kind of leads in back to her. Um, and these bubbles go, you know, they take me back to the face. I think the only thing that really stands out to me as kind of strange is the halo around her head. There's a lot of, oh, there's yeah. significant chromatic aberration right here. And I don't know if it's because of um, the editing, because it was too contrasty or, or what, but that it's really, it's very distracting to me. Um, it's also a little bit dark for my yes. taste and a little That's bit comment. blue as well. I uh, if this was my picture, I'd definitely brighten it up a Bring little up bit. Bring up the shadows. Yeah. But in terms of the composition, um, it's really great. We have just a little something coming in over there on the side, too. So the T4i with a 40 milli f2.8. It's a good lens. Yeah. I'm a little curious about these bubbles that are just... It's funny because we get this... We get a sense of the three-dimensionality of these bubbles through here uh, because we have the ring of them, but then we have reflections within them. And then, and then up here, we don't. Um, yeah. So they look a little funny to me as well, and I don't think they add anything. No, I think they do. They do. They lead back in. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> but the halo and the darkness uh, could be a little brighter. Thanks, Luke. So this is a cool macro shot, except for the lighting. I am not crazy about the lighting on this one. 18 to 55. It's just way too contrasty. Um, how did you get that close with that lens? Extension tubes, Jonathan? or uh, like a lens reverser, that's very close. The, the colors up here um, are awesome. The detail the up detail, there is a pretty uh, astounding. Little. Gross looking. Fly muzzle. Phase. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, very good. But yeah, it, it is contrasty and the, you know, the green, this is, I don't wanna say blown out, but it, you know, it feels like we're- A little too bright. We're yeah. losing some detail in this area and that does, um, that's bothering me too. And it's also a little too cramped. I would give it a little bit more room to breathe. A little bit more. Um, you know, you may have been trying to crop out distracting elements. Um, so if that's the case, then 
that's certainly the scrub certainly helped um, but I would just give it just a little bit more room it feels a little too tight to me and you know one of the um, when you're trying to crop a photo a good guideline or a good rule of thumb um, if you're gonna take this photo to print especially is to crop it at a one of the standard aspect ratio so like a four by six or an eight by ten or four uh, four and a half by six um, just because you know if you take this photo to print um, you know at four by six even because this is not a four by six aspect ratio you're gonna lose something you're gonna lose either the top or the bottom because you're not giving yourself enough room for um, the crop or the bleed when you print images you know there's a pretty you know there's at least a quarter of an inch bleed so you're gonna lose this part you know a significant portion of this side and this side and that side so give yourself a little bit more room um, as though you were taking this photo to print and I think you know we just we had just I don't want to say a pile of criticism but we just had a fair amount of criticisms but I don't want to overlook the fact that somehow you created an incredible macro picture with an yeah, 18 to 55 absolutely lens. and I mean the detail in here uh, and again the colors really really nicely done yeah so oh and that was Liam hello Liam and Liam appreciates it as well he does I think he's hungry all right so now we've got this one from Ahmed lighting one I can't decide if the f uh, this is really if I really like it or if it's really distracting um, now that I look at it cl more closely I it seems like there's been some significant noise reduction that's been applied. Um, and you can Why only do you say that? Because this looks just really soft. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and it was taken at F13, mm -hmm. which means that this would be really... It should be in focus. Well, although ISO was 100. 100. How exact... Oh, one second, I see. Okay. Well, you can still get some noise... Um, when you photograph a dark image, if you try to bring up some of the shadows, um, maybe tell us if you did, because it looks like maybe there was wind and there was a little bit of oh, grass yeah. movement. Oh well, that's really cool then. Then it's okay. Well, yeah, no, no, so, I'm not, well, I wasn't well, saying that it was a bad thing. I'm just, right. I, okay. it, just yeah, I was just it making out. an observation. And that's, that's all my first. Um, well, I think this this does a neat. This is neat because we've got these lanterns lit up um, and they're part of this huge light show that looks like it stretches on yeah. with a lot of different elements to it. And um, that's cool. But I think this is one of those things where the double take assignment should yeah, apply. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think taking a shot or two like this is, is fine. But to submit to us, I think just these lanterns from the left or the right sitting on the grass lit up lighting yeah. the grass up around them, nothing else. I think that would be a strong image and that would work well. I have an, a new idea for an assignment. Oh, good. We need one so everybody can work on it while we're away. Okay. Um, so going back to the double take, what I would like everybody to do is to take two different photographs and to make a diptych. Um, so they're going to place them side by side which means that you're probably going to be pretty limited to mostly portrait type shots not like portraits of people but just the the format of the photo itself um is going to be vertical format okay. what do you think about that that sounds great um, and maybe can we put an example or two together to share yeah and we'll do a tutorial um maybe of how to Give me more work. All right. <laughs> how to make a diptych in Lightroom. Oh, um, that would be great because that's what I was thinking. Um, folks will need Photoshop. But that's right. You can do it in Lightroom. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. so we'll do that. So, what, um, so yeah, so more, more information will come very soon. Or maybe talk, well, explain it just a little bit well, more because it'll take me a little time to get information out and some people like to get working right away. Same idea as the double take photo. You're, you're basically trying to capture one thing. It can be a portrait of a person. It can be a portrait of a scene. It can be, but your goal is to capture two different photos of one thing. 
So I'm, I'm hearing this and thinking that it, basically you're saying do the double take assignment again, but this time you're submitting one image that is containing two. That's right. And I think that what I want to get out of this is for... I want you, you, we want you all to get out of this. Yeah, so that we want you all to get out of this is to be able to study one place or person or subject and be able to create two images that are visually different but that together tell a story about a person, thing, or place. Um, okay. And you can display them side by side and they both work together side by side. But again, they're different images. There's, there's consistency in the aesthetic, um, if that makes sense. Yep. Okay, that sounds great. We will have a Lightroom diptych creation tutorial up within the next week. And the due date for this assignment will be early August. Uh, let's say in about two and a, two and a half weeks. We're going to be away for part of that time. So yeah, and we'll work. find a we'll list an example. We I have a, a couple of really good examples of uh, diptychs that should hopefully inspire people. Great. We need inspiration, Christina. Great. Good. And Ahmed's was it. I think we've said what we wanted to say. Um, I think there's some really cool elements here, but this could be better if it was just focused in on the lanterns. Yeah. Um, and thank you so much to everybody who submitted. Sorry we didn't get to critique everybody, uh, but I think that is going to be more often how it is moving forward as just so many are submitted each week. We used to be just 15 or 20 and we could manage, but now we're getting in the neighborhoods of 40 to 50, and that's a lot. And it's wonderful, but we yeah. can't get them all done. Yeah. So thank you all. Uh, do the diptychs, though, because I bet not a lot of people are going to make the effort. Uh, so if you want to hear us talk about your image, you want your image on the screen in front of all these folks watching, which is a little nerve-wracking, but you know what? It's wonderful. It's impressive. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. That's an easy way to thank us for our time. Thanks so much. Good night. Good night.